Okay, good afternoon everybody. My name is Peter and uh, thank you for the invitation and the nice uh, presentation. So I will not go so much into uh, details in, uh, about myself, but uh, a few of my colleagues has just mentioned all the vessels sailing around with LPG and other cargo. Now we will look a little more into uh, to the engine, uh, maybe not the most important thing on the ship, but second most important I will say, uh, in my opinion. But first of all, let's look a little bit about the numbers. If you take a look in the upper right corner, you will see we have uh, more than uh, 1,000 dual fuel engines in our portfolio at the moment. We have 308 dual fuel engines in service. And just below that, what is the most interesting part is that you, you see the, the blue bars going back from 2013 and up to, to yesterday. And then you can see that the blue bar is slightly changed color into a green. And that means that by uh, last year, 2022, of the orders we have is 63% uh, of the, the total order income is, uh, is actually dual fuel engines. So it is a thing which is here and it's a thing to come. The 63% is not only LPG engines, but a bright priority of our, of our uh, dual fuel portfolio. What are we are talking about today is the LPG in the lower uh, uh, left corner. We have, uh, and I have to correct my two gentlemen, uh, colleagues here, we have 63 LPG engines uh, in service at the moment. We have 149, I have to look on the corner, 149 on order. So we are uh, speeding up uh, rapidly on this. Uh, so that is just to get the numbers uh, a, little bit, a little bit up to date, I would say. Uh, a small agenda for today. I will not sp uh, spend so much time on that. I uh, have, uh, as the others, uh, limited time. First of all, uh, the LPG as a marine fuel, we have heard a little bit about it. Uh, we first introduced it was in September 2018, where we had a public demonstration at our research facilities in Copenhagen, with, which was a, what we call a 50 ball engine. That means the cylinder diameter is 50 centimeters. That's how we pronounce our engines. And at the, since that, it has been going uh, quite fast, I will say. It is more or less for, for the LPG carriers at the moment. Running dual fuel is the standard engine, the LTIP engine. And as I said, we had uh, 149 on order. Uh, and out in service, we have uh, 63. And 15 of those are of the so-called retrofitted type. I will come a little bit back to the retrofitting possibilities a little bit later. You can see there is some uh, NOx uh, and uh, SOx or, and some um, CO2 emissions uh, savings on the LPG, but still it is uh, uh, one, one kind of the fuels that is, in our perspective at the moment, uh, not limited to, but only sold for, LNG, uh, for LPG carriers at the moment. Let's look a little bit about the, the engine I've been talking about. And I will just uh, be a little bit on this picture because that is actually a standard MAN engine. And the yellow part you see on the top is actually what separates the different engines from a conventional diesel engine, a LNG fuel engine, or a methanol engine, or in this case we are discussing today LPG engines. The, the engines are exactly the same except for the fuel uh, equipment. A little bit on uh, how we build up the engines is uh, that uh, we have what we call a, a gas block, the yellow one, and by that, that is uh, controlling uh, the gas fuel or the gas injection on each cylinder. That is identical on all the cylinders if it's a six cylinder, eight cylinder or even up to 12 cylinder engine. We have a control uh, which actually admit the gas uh, to the cylinder, which is what we call ELWI uh, valve, that is uh, number one. And then on number two side is the, the ejection control valve or the timing valve, which actually tie, do the correct timing uh, for this particular injection. We have a hydraulic accumulator uh, for the hydraulic controls. And then we have number four and number five, which is our double wall pipe supply and return system. That is adapted from the, our, all our dual fuel engines, it's a, a similar safety uh, design where we have everything run in a double wall pipe system. Both the supply to the engine and the return system is in a double wall pipe system. 
that you can see here, uh, where we have the blue in the blue piping, is actually the supply, and the uh, surrounding yellow pipe is actually a part of the double wall pipe. And that is in the engine room uh, separated, so that in the engine room there will be no exposed gas pipes, everything will be in a double vent ventilated pipe. So on the outlet venting we have uh, HC sensors for detection any leakages or anything like that. The injection uh, with LPG, it cannot ignite by itself, so we need to have what we call a pilot injection. That is a very small amount of uh, diesel or heavy fuel or any other distillate fuel that is provided by uh, number one on the drawing up there. That is a conventional, well-known uh, fuel valve which we have on our, uh, all our engines, more or less. The number two is the so-called FBIV P, that's a fuel booster injection valve, uh, and that is actually delivering uh, the LPG into the combustion chamber. The supply pressure on the engine is a little more than 50 bar, but the injection pressure uh, out of this FBIV is something like six to 700 uh, bar in the, in the combustion chamber. But all our dual fuel engines, except one, will have this system where we have a conventional fuel valve adding a little bit of diesel to have the ignition and milliseconds after we will have the, the dual fuel uh, injection either by LPG, LNG or methanol or any other of the dual fuel engines uh, uh, for the future also. Just a little bit, uh, I need to remember the timing, a little bit of how the, the things are designed on board. Uh, below the yellow dotted line is the engine room and the red pipes here is, it's, this is what I uh, told you about, about the double wall pipe system and all the other things is deck equipment or equipment outside the engine room. We are not so uh, choosy about the fuel, the LPG fuel, we are quite flexible. Uh, we have some uh, maximum on the ethane content of the LPG, which must be maximum be 25%, and the same we have a minimum requirements on the butane and propane part. Talking about the, uh, the retrofitting prospects and the uh, possibilities, uh, now if we look into LPG as the fuel, then you can see on, on all our platforms, the standard ME platforms, we are actually able to retrofit it into uh, LPG fuel engine. Except for the, the one in the middle, the MEGA, which is a completely different uh, engine concept. Uh, it's a little bit different cylinder liners and cylinder covers, but basically all our ME platforms can be converted into uh, LPG engines and vice versa. Other engines can be converted into methanol or anything like that. The LGIP or LPG engine is a new technology for us and when we introduce new technology we also uh, face new challenges and I will just briefly touch some of those. We have had some uh, issues with our activation pipes which you can see over on the uh, right hand side of the picture. We have simply uh, breakage of pipes which is not uh, very nicely in the engine room and for that reason we have modified the design of the, the piping and we have also added what you can see on the green drawing up there, um, some brackets to support these uh, high pressure activation pipe. And by this we will limit the vibration and the stresses on the pipes so we can actually have uh, a, a standard installation. It has been a little bit, the activation, the, uh, the hydraulic activation has been a little bit different on those engines that we are used to on the methanol and the other dual fuel engines. But we have solved this issue and for all the vessels in service, all these improvements are ordered, already sent out and of course all new deliveries will be equipped with this new uh, equipment. Also we have faced uh, these uh, so-called atomizers, the LPG atomizers, that is an injector which actually injects the LPG fuel into the combustion chamber. We have seen they are clogged up as you can see in some of the pictures, mainly when we analyze the material or the debris, it's uh, calcium oxide and that turns out to be quite hard and will block slowly up these atomizers. We have introduced different uh, atomizers we are testing. We have been testing the categories 1, 2 and 3 as you can see over there. But it is actually number 2 that we are going out with at the moment. And it's actually an atomizer which is slightly longer as the standard. And by that we actually pointed more into the center of the combustion and by that it's heated up and that will limit 
or at least uh, reduce the, the tendency of clogging. You can see my time is more or less out. I will hurry up a little bit. On the FBIV uh, fuel booster injection valve, we have also had some issues. You can see we have one part, that's the blue part up uh, in the corner, which uh, breaks and we have uh, made a new design of this. And we have uh, uh, changed it for, to be a two-part solution, to be a one-part solution that is, has been uh, finalized and designed recently. And on the same thrust piece, we have seen the O-rings. Um, the O-ring material was very sensitive to what we call rapid gas decompression. Uh, I can explain it to you, but I don't have so much time. Uh, but we have introduced new sealing arrangements of a little bit different material, two types, and that has actually, uh, actually solved this issue uh, quite well. It's just a small summary for what I've been talking about uh, today. Uh, most important is that uh, we are uh, uh, getting there, uh, quite happy with the solution for the LGIP engines. We have recognized some issues and we are slowly uh, sending out these new um, uh, technologies to the engines and on new deliveries they will be all equipped with that, with that new solution. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for your uh, listening up today.